doing this now we're actually going to start on tuesday nights it's just that yesterday you know i, I told you you know so today's just a one-time thing on wednesday nights but our originally time would be tuesday nights at seven o'clock again excuse me i am running a little behind all right so let me go ahead and show you the book on which we will be using for spiritual boot camp now if you all been to my bible studies you know how i roll i roll with god i roll with the holy spirit definitely going to be in order and everything but i roll with the holy spirit so this is the book a lot of you asked me some of you found it on different websites uh, for five dollars and things of that nature i think some of you said that amazon was out of it again spiritual boot camp it's called journey through spiritual boot camp and it's about it says basic training for christians by tommy c hegel or Haug. Look, if i'm saying your name wrong wrong miss what is it hon hegel hegel thank you i appreciate you there are people in bible study person as well so it's hegel excuse me mr tom if you're out there appreciate you all right so this is the book so let's go ahead and pray in because we have a lot to cover all the time i don't care what nobody say there's too much i'm, I'm gonna tell y'all in a minute after we pray on why this is necessary i don't care if you just own facebook in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i just thank you father god that you cover us father god we just come to you boldly to the throne of grace first of all god just thanking you god giving you thanks for who you are father god in the name of jesus father god i pray the name of jesus everybody that's in the sound of my voice father god let it be all of you and none of me father god let us expound the word of God like never before, Father God. Search our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Oh, Father God, allow it, Father God, to actually overtake them, Father God, so that they'll hear your voice, that they understand that this is of you, God. Hallelujah. Strengthen them, Father God, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare it to be so. I thank you, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. Oh, Father God, block anything that is not of you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. We give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen, amen, amen. One of the things I want to expound on is that one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because God was telling me, he said, we have to go back to spiritual warfare. So many people, I, I've, I've heard pastors, preachers, leaders, oh, it don't take all that. You know why it don't take all that? Because you can't do all that because you're not, you have not positioned yourself. Oh, come on, somebody, let me just talk it like I walk it. Let me tell you something. You have to spend time with God and you have to spend time in the word of God. It's okay to hear the good motivational speakers or even good pastors and preachers, but you have to put in the time. You have to put in the work so that way you can know God's voice and what to shift, what to do, where to go, and what assignment. So let me go ahead and tell you something, okay? So social media, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, just want to give you why it's so important that you gird yourself in social media. Social means relating to society or its organizations rather than in there. So y'all know what that means? This is a world system. This is not our system. We're just in it. The Bible says that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. All right. The second, um, the second definition is needing companionship. That's why a lot of people have found people on social media. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. I'm not going to say that's a good thing. I'm going to say as long as it's a God thing. Come on, somebody write that. Also media, the main means of mass communication, media means it's a spirit media y'all oh, come on somebody plural form medium means by what something is communicated or expressed even through the music so i just wanted you to understand how powerful social media is and how you have to guard yourself and gird yourself in the name of jesus christ of nazareth all right so let's get started if you have your books if you do not have your books just go ahead and write down things you know that uh, pertain to you right okay so let's start I haven't even opened it because I wanted it to be fresh when the Holy Spirit gives me something or whatever the case may be. All right, so let's go ahead and read Mr. Higo. Um, is it Higo? Higo. Higo, okay. All right. Boot camp is a place where military trainees receive basic training. As believers, we are in a spiritual war. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you because I don't know what they're thinking of. Talking about the others that teach that it don't take all that. Okay, whatever. Let's continue. 
We are in a spiritual war and some basic training is needed to prepare believers for the battle. When I became a Christian, the battle was very difficult for me because there was very few training resources available for new believers. There are many available now, but none of them follow the journey style and format that God has so richly blessed in my teachings. Therefore, I developed this study form from a number of sermons I have preached over the years on the fundamentals of the Christian faith. This study is designed to help new believers receive the basic training needed to be victi- vic- I'm sorry, victorious in their Christian lives. This lesson in this book are a result of more than 30 years of preaching and teaching God's words. However, in developing this study, I have gotten many great ideas from reading the books listed in the bibliography. The purpose of this journey series is to present the word of God in a simple, practical way that is true to the scriptures and offers an exciting growth experience to both mature and new believers. I want to thank the wonderful people of Marietta's First Baptist Church who have supported me for more than 20 years. They have patiently and lovingly listened to me preach and teach series on the same books or chapters of the Bible as many as three or four times as I was developing a journey study. I believe God would give them a special place in heaven for kindly serving a a guinea pigs for this study. To everyone in our incredible church, I thank you for your support, encouragement, and love. I am indebted to my wife, Virginia, a former English teacher and now administrator, editor-in-chief of the Journey Series, for spending many hours correcting my (laughs) grammatical errors and vague sentences. You know know we all know about that part. A special thanks go out to efficient staff and all my wonderful friends of the Journey House, Martha Greenwood, Carolyn Gordon, Patty Donison, and Paula Cheney. We do all the collating, shipping, and hundreds of other things. Vicki King, customer service, and Shane Wolf, office pressman. Also, thanks to Ada Best Hill, my secretary for more than 20 years, for proofreading sometimes for the deadline that gives her very little time. A special thanks to Gerald Stone, an architect and artist, who always does this wonderful and unique job with the drawings for our studies. May our Lord use this study to help you have a journey through spiritual boot camp. Tommy Higgle, Marietta, Oklahoma, June 2002. Believe it or not, since 2002. All right, but it's like, look at it circulating in 2022. So I wanted to read that. Okay, so let's start. Lesson one is, well, hold on. What is a Christian? Okay, lesson one is, what is a Christian? So, It says, lesson one, what is a Christian? Every Christian needs to go through spiritual boot camp, just as every soldier must go through military boot camp. In 1970, I went through military boot camp at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Hey, you know I'm from Louisiana. There I began my military training by learning the basics of being a good soldier. Remember I told y'all, God said we got to go back to basics. That's pretty much it. In spiritual boot camp, we learn the basis of being a good Christian. However, before we we can become a good Christian, we must first answer the question, what is a Christian? If someone were to ask you that question, how would you respond? Is being a Christian belonging to a certain church? Is being religious? Keeping the Ten Commandments? Believing the Bible? Many people don't know the answer to the basic question, what is a Christian? Let's approach the question from another direction. What verse in the Bible best describes a Christian? There are several, but one of the best ones in Philippians 1.21. Philippians 1.21. Let's go there. Philippians 1.21, everybody. So um, I know that y'all have y'all Bible, right? Our phones. But have your Bible too. I got my Bible right here because we're going to do some real, we're going to do some stuff tonight. All right. Philippians 121 says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's read um, another version of it. Paul and them with the services of Christ Jesus to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippia, together with the overseas and deacon says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, 121. Hold on. Okay. You got it for me? Thank you so much. 
Be an excellent armor bearer. New Living Translation. All right, just the New Living Translation. Okay. It's the same one I um, read. Well, no, it's the New Living one. For to me, living means living for Christ and dying is even better. So basically, it's to live and to die for Christ. In this time, in this age, people are not doing that because they want to actually, you know, everybody want to fit in. So we're going to just keep on going because I have a lot to cover in this one hour, the hour of power, right? Being a Christian involves much more than what we believe. In this essence, it is what we are. Most studies at the basics of the Christian faith are always exclusively about what Christians believe, not what they are. Being a Christian is letting Jesus Christ live through us. It is becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, which is becoming more like God since Jesus is God in flesh and blood. John 1. It has always been God's will that we be like him. How does Genesis 1.27 declare this truth? So we're going to be moving, apparently, in our Bible. So let's just do that. Genesis 1.27. I'm going to go by Because when, I need to start getting that. We, we've gotten all, like, in the... She going to be playing. She got it. <laughs> she got it quick for me. All right. Genesis 1.27 says... So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, we can expound on that and go way to the right and the left, but I'm going to keep it simple tonight because I just want us to get started. Not to mention, I have a whole, <laughs> a whole. we're going to start in this, but we're going to end with Bible because God told me to actually um, go to the book of Micah, and this is it, thus said the Lord. So, Again, it says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You don't understand what's happening these days. That's why, thank you so much. Here's what's happening. The enemy is literally trying to recreate us. We just read it. We were made in the image of God. But what the enemy wants to do, he wants you to forget about that. That's why we're doing this. We're adding this to our body. We're coloring our head. I'm not saying all that. Well, some of it is if it's going to hurt your body, you know, like the butt injections and everything else. You were made in the image of God. Love you with your good self, with your sharp self, with your black self, with your white self, with your sharp, with your obese self, with your skinny self. Learn to love you, God says. All right, let's continue. Because like I said, we have a lot to cover. From the very beginning of time, God has warned us to be like him. Not that we should be gods, but that we would be godly. <laughs> I love that. However, sin messed up God's plan for us. Sin mars God's image in our lives. But Jesus came to earth so that we can become what God originally intended. Before we were born, it was God's will for us to be like Jesus. What is to be in God's image? How does Romans 8.29 express this truth? 8.29. Thank you so much. All right, so 8.29 says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Praise God, praise God. You know, I am I am, I'm, I'm definitely just in awe of the way God chooses us. Every last one of you are chosen for such a time as this. From the usher, to the pastor, to the preacher, to the teacher, to the media specialists. You all have a ministry inside of you. And I know you don't think so. Well, I don't do that. I don't. In this last hour, God is doing a new thing. So yes, be open-minded and understand who you are and whose you are. Let's continue. Praise God. And you can, if you have your books, you also can write your answers in of what you think. And if you want, you can um, email them to me. And also, I wanted to say this as well. Um, if okay so these are definitely free you know we're doing bible study but if you want to be a blessing my cash app is dollar sign prophetess dd again dollar sign prophetess dd if you are led by god i'm gonna say this again if you are led by god or you can donate through my website which is www.apostledeannadixon.com and press the donation button again that's being led by god all right let's continue 
God wants us to conform to the image of his son, but that we'll be his original intended godly people shaped in his image. Therefore, the phrase for me to live is in I'm sorry, for me to live is Christ. Philip Philippians, Philippians 120, excuse me. Or literally letting Christ live through us. I like that. I like that. That's real right there. Sums up what it is to be a Christian. For this to happen, three things must be true in our lives. We have faith in Christ, fellowship with Christ, and follow after Christ. Let me say that again. We have faith in Christ. So many people are losing faith in this hour. My God, I, I, can, I can do a whole sermon. It'll be all night long on just that alone. Even in my life, there are times when things have happened where I'm not going to say I completely lost my faith, but I sure was asking God, what's going, what's going on? You love me? You with me? And you have done the same. You can't tell me you haven't. Because there are times, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Father, if this cup could pass from me, but nevertheless, thy will be done. That's where your faith is supposed to kick in. God, I don't understand this. God, I don't like this. God, this doesn't feel good. God, I don't understand the plan. But I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I love you, God. I'm going to keep on rolling with you, God. That's easier said than done. But this is why you get in that word. You pray every day. You form that relationship just like you do a husband, just like you do a wife, just like you do somebody that you're interested in. It's a relationship. Then you can start trusting God. But when you don't have a relationship, you, of course you'll be like, I don't know God. So you have to develop that relationship. And then it says fellowship with Christ. Th that's the relationship part. You know, I, I know you're busy. Come on, somebody. And, and this world, is everybody trying to get a dollar, just, just trying to survive, truth be told. Please spend time with God. I had to learn this as well. So I'm not just teaching something that I haven't actually learned and processed in. From a young woman to now. I start spending time with God. When I get up in the morning, I don't speak to anyone but God first. I don't care. I don't care if I was married. He'd have to be number two. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. What is the plan? Then I try to get in the word and listen to the audio or I get in my Bible. Because I want to know the plan, what God has for me. The way you start your day is the way you're going to end your day. Not to mention, the enemy coming at you. A lot of people, I don't understand why people don't believe that you have a known enemy. He says it all through the New Testament. The New Testament. So, that means in order for me to stand and be strong, I got to have something in me. No word in you. No power in you. Somebody write that in the comments. No word, no power. Say what you want to say. Because you can talk a good game all day long. But when you go through those tests, trials, and tribulations, and you shall, how will you stand? Will you cuss, fuss, turn back to drinking, doing, doing what's comfortable? Because I don't believe people just do bad things. I believe things happen, and they don't know how to handle them. Oh, come on, somebody. We talking up in here tonight. And the last one says, follow after Christ. You know, I, I, I remember when Christ was giving them hard sayings. A lot of them love Christ. And he looked at the apostles and he said, will you leave me too? It's hard to fall after God sometimes. Let's be honest. There are some times that we, we get discouraged and we're like, you know, I don't know. Look like before I came to Christ. But truth be told, that's smoke screens. Because regardless if you fight or not, you have a known enemy. That's trying to annihilate your, uh, let's go scripture, steal, kill, and destroy. And not necessarily in that order. Let's continue. It says, first we have faith in Christ. Faith in Christ begins by acknowledging we can do nothing to save and change ourselves. A Christian is someone who acknowledges that through Christ's death on the cross, God provided a way for us to be saved from the penalty and marring of our own sin. Unfortunately, many people who know what a Christian is, is still trust in the wrong things. They trust in their good moral character, their church membership, their good deeds. Oh, Lord have mercy. You, you know somebody that does it. Hold on. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It's just that I'm a good person. I know people don't like it when I say this, but I move to say it because this is in my spirit. There are going to be some good people in, in hell. <laughs> Let me say that again. I know y'all be like, no, she didn't. There's going to be some good people in hell. Why I say that? Because every good thing is not a God thing. And God had to show me that as well. Well, I did this. I did this. My brothers and my sisters, did you do what God asked you to do, though? That is the thing. Remember what the scripture says. That on that day, he will say, depart from me. 
they will be like, I preached in your name. I laid hands on your name. I, I healed in your name. He said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Do you understand those last words? I never knew you. We were not in fellowship. We were not in relationship. You did not obey me. He says, those that love me, obey me. Oh, come on, somebody. How do you? Let's continue. Let's continue. He says, however, the Bible declares, for by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8. Then how does the next? Thank you, Jesus. All right. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. If you ask the average person if they're going to heaven, he or she would say, probably say, I hope so. I'm doing the best I can. In other words, I self am doing works the best I can. That's not what it means for a Christian. A Christian is someone who trusts in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. I'm going to say that again. A Christian is someone who trusts in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. Your money can't save you. Your husband can't save you. Your wife can't save you. Your children can't save you. Your job can't. I think y'all get the point. This is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And for some reason, sometimes you put that on the back burner. Well, my brothers and sisters, Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. I've been repeating that for like all this year, and, and I keep hearing it loud. You got to make sure that Jesus Christ is truly the Lord over your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's continue. It says, that's not what it means to be a Christian. A Christian is someone who trusts in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. The word faith is pitas. In the New Testament, it means faith firm persuasion or to believe in something to the degree it changes your life faith in christ is not the same thing or believing things about christ for example many people believe the facts about the life and death of adolf hitler but to have faith in hitler would make you a nazi faith causes us to do two things that change our lives forever in the last sentence of mark 115 how does jesus sum up what we must do to become a christian okay it says Mark says, and as he walked by the Sea of the Galilee, he saw Simon and, okay, I'm sorry, excuse me, 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let me pull it down some more. It says, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of, king, of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So, repent, change and believe as a matter of fact that's what repent means to change so many people and i i don't know about you but when i remember when i was doing what i was doing when i was 27 28 years old i repent repent every week <laughs> then after i repent i go back and do the same thing and i would go i would go up to the altar every sunday i'm not lying to you okay what is your question kelly what's your question are you on bible study go ahead and email it to me or text it so i would repent every week finally a minister a bold when i love that man to this day he said i'm you come here every week so i'm trying I'm talking to some of you every week you're repenting for the same thing he said you know you just all you need to do is just stop <laughs> that's when you get tired sick and tired of being sick and tired oh come on somebody how do you let, let me continue praise god praise god first we must repent Repent means also, which means the change of mind followed by change in behavior. This means you stop living your life like you want and start living like God wants. Oh, Lord, I didn't just hit everybody, everybody over the head plus me. Let me, read, let me read that again. This means you stop living your life like you want and start living like God wants. That is hard sometimes because the flesh, this flesh, this flesh want to do what it want to do. That's why he says, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. How do you get in the spirit? I've just told you, and I'm going to be repeating it. Get in that word. Fast and pray. Have that relationship. In the morning, get up. God, thank you for waking me up. Before you go to bed, you really probably shouldn't look at TV or listen to music. Or even talk on the phone. At least, you know, give yourself 20 minutes before you talk on that last phone call. And then just 
Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that you keep me while I sleep at night. I pray that you, that you allow the angels to minister to my spirit. Come on, this is where we. This is this is where we going. This is how you keep your spirit pure. I didn't say perfect. I said pure. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And there, I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes I do sleep, go to bed with the word. Wake up, wake up, turn it off. Maybe two, three o'clock. Sometimes it just go all night. I'll, I'll pick an audio. I'll pick a long book, not a short book like Isaiah, Jeremiah. That way it keeps going on and on for hours because that's a lot of books. All right, let's continue. Second, we must believe the gospel, which means we believe two things. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and he rose from the dead to prove all he taught was, was true. God has made it simple as he possibly can for us to become a Christian. Therefore, we must resist the temptation and make it complicated. We must remember the kiss presented principle it means keep it simple somehow i'm gonna re read that again god has made it simple as he possibly can for us to become a christian therefore we must resist the temptation to make it complicated we must remember the kiss principle keep it simple somehow we must let people know that to become a christian they must do two simple things repent of their sins and believe the gospel that's it end of story what is a christian if we are christians we have faith in Christ. Second, we fellowship with Christ. Paul wrote, for me to live is Christ, which means Christ was literally living through him. Christianity is not a religion. It, it is a relationship. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just knock the half of the world out with that one. I'm going to say that again. Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. As Christians were sometimes in danger of losing Jesus amid the wonders of God's word. Jesus is a person, not a book or impersonal force. The Bible is God's holy inspired word, but God doesn't want us to have a relationship with the Bible. He wants us to use the Bible to learn how to have a personal relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. How does 1 Corinthians 1, 9 reveal this truth? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. All right. It says, Corinthians 1, 9 says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise God. Okay, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. All right, it says, okay, the word fellowship is called ona, literally means partnership or participation. Fellowship means we are partners with Christ and participate in becoming the person he wants us to be. Faith in Christ leads to fellowship with Christ. How do we cultivate fellowship with Christ? It requires these things. Number one, fellowship with Christ requires the right place. There are places that can lead us away from Christ, but there are also places that draw us closer to him. All week long, our fellowship with Christ is attacked by the world, and as a result, we sometimes get discouraged. That's why we need to obey what command in Hebrews 10, 25, if we are to maintain our fellowship with Christ. Praise God, praise God. Hebrews 10, 25 says, And let us not neglect our meeting together. And this is what this is. And I had to repent because, you know, sometimes, let's just be real. We want this and we want that. And not that God didn't give it to us, but this is important. For us to meet it is important for us to share it is important for us to pray together come on somebody he say and let us not neglect in our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near if this is not real i don't know what is especially in this last hour thank you so much because right now it's hot out here and when i say it like that everybody's going through something all right let's continue Cultivating and maintaining fellowship with Christ requires the right kind of stimuli, such as being in the presence of other believers. Having appropriate muse music. Okay, oh Lord, we got to stop right there just for a minute. Whoo, uh, this pastor got mad because, and his wife got mad because we Facebook friends. And when I saw <laughs> in person, she was like, okay, so this pastor, I'm not going to say no name today. <laughs> He had communion. He was giving our communion cups and he was listening to Meg the Stallion. I had a problem with that. Not that I'm trying to be all bashful, trying to judge, but sir, we have to be careful because this is a holy thing. Communion is holy. And you're giving it to your, your parishioners. What kind of spirit is attached to that listen to Meg the Stallion? And everybody needs to be safe. Not judging nobody, but we have to do things in decent and in order all right let's continue it says 
And hearing the word of God taught and preached, therefore we must be in the right place. Two, fellowship with Christ sometimes requires pain. Uh-oh. Fellowship with Christ sometimes requires pain. We don't want to do that. Our fellowship with Christ most often brings excitement and joy. Yet there are other times when it involves pain and suffering. Paul wrote about the fellowship of Christ's suffering. Philippians 3.10, which refers to a deep partnership or communion with Christ's suffering. Our most intimate times of fellowship are times of intense suffering that result from living for him and his purpose for our lives. During these times, we have a unique close encounter with the power and presence of Christ. How does Paul describe this truth in 2 Corinthians 12.10? 2 Corinthians 12.10 reads, That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships. Uh oh let me, let, me, let me read that again. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know I can have, I have that testimony as all of us. I'm not going to lie. It is, that's why I say this, like David said, it is good that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. No, I didn't like it. It didn't feel good. However, it drew me closer to Christ. It opened up my eyes. It, 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 it grew me up. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care how old you are. That's why I don't understand people that act like they arrived. As long as you are in this flesh, we are a mess. And God will send things to grow you up in the spirit. And then you, you, the light bulb will come on. You'll be like, okay, I understand how to do this now. I understand how to stand strong now. I understand. I understand. Come on, somebody. Just real. All right, let's continue. He says, our deepest fellowship with Christ is when we partner in his suffering and experience his presence and power in a way that we can know at no other time. That's real. When you are in pain. Remember I said that all last year when I lost my dad, his two uncles, and my aunt. I lost everybody. Every Dixon left. I'm the last Dixon. Hello. Is it registering? That pain pushed me through my purpose. It, it, and, I, and I feel myself getting closer to God. And when I say this, this is not to boast. I have never been this close to God in my whole life never and it feels good do i have challenges still <laughs> we just read that can we go back to that that scripture the the one um second corinthians 12 10 and i want you to write this this down for your own self because you're gonna need it you are definitely gonna need it because sometimes we wonder why this is your why this is your why okay Okay, wait a minute. What happened? Yeah. Just one moment, you guys. Second, second. second Corinthians, uh huh, twelve ten. That's okay. Okay, thank you so much. It says, "This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong." You all need to mark that because every time you go through something, you need to remember this scripture. This is why. A lot of people say, I don't understand. This is why. Because he went through it, so we're going to go through it. You know, I, I, I'm kind of aloof when I see people just having a great time in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying I'm jealous. I'm looking like, are you anointed? Because my Bible say, and my life says, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's keep going. You know, you know. So anywho, it says, fellowship with Christ requires patience oh my god especially in this microwave world everybody want fast 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 y'all know it's true fellowship with christ is not automatic it is a process that takes time as already mentioned the process can be painful paul writes that tribulation worketh patience romans 5 3 then in verse 4 what does paul say about patient produces now thank you patience produces and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confidence and hope of salvation. Let me read that again. And endurance develops strengths of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. That's real. The more you go through, you're supposed to get stronger. Because you know God is with you. He's been through it. You know, Jesus came as an example. Hallelujah. In every form. He understands. Okay, let's continue. Patiently enduring suffering or pain produces experience. It's called doko me. Which means we have proven character. Now y'all understand when I say I've been proven? Some of you, most of you have. 
if you still walking and talking and living. And I tell people, that's why I say, keep living. Oh, you're going you to understand real quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's continue. It says, of Christ in our lives, this is the end result of fellowship with Christ. It makes us like Christ and more in the image of God. What is a Christian? If we are Christians, we have faith in Christ. We fellowship with Christ. And third, we follow after Christ. It is interesting that all of the apostles in the New Testament, the one whose conversion experience comes quick to our minds is Paul. He is a very dramatic experience when a blinding light from heaven and an audible voice speaking to him. However, that is not only such conversion experience in the New Testament. Not of the other disciples experience a blinding light or a voice from heaven. The other disciples conversion experience is consistent of responding to a simple invitation from Christ. Through the invitation varies somewhat. Notice two key words in each, in each one. Jesus said to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4, 19. To Matthew and Philip, he simply said, follow me, Matthew 9, 9, and John 1, 4, 3. Jesus' invitation has not changed. What invitation does he give you and me in Matthew 6, 24? And Matthew 6, 24, he said, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. People have a hard time doing this when I even did. Because sometimes we want to do our own thing. God, look, I'll I, I see you a little later. I love you, but I'm going to go do this. And then when we get what we get, and those are consequences, situations, tests, trials, we always blame God. And God said, wait a minute. You didn't even let me in on that one. You ain't did your own thing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But thank God for his grace and his mercy, right? Because it endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you guys. We're almost finished, but not technically because um, we're going to do lesson one. But then I have a, a mini lesson with the Bible. In a simply form, Christ's invitation to each of us is follow me. Are you following Christ? Oh, come on. Uh, come on. You ain't got to tell me, but tell, tell it to yourself. Ask yourself and be real with yourself. Are you really following Christ? And I'm not saying being perfect. Well, you're really trying because God wants your best. Maybe you don't know for certain. To find out, all you must do is fill in the blank in the following statement. For me to live is to, what did we say? To live in Christ. If you are totally honest, what word or words would you put in the blank? Money, work, a hobby, school, career, or what? If you are going to follow Jesus, you must forsake anything and everything that is keeping you from conforming to his image. And can I tell you something? The enemy will send people. Oh, God, I could tell you so many stories. We don't have time for it. It'll be two lifetimes. The enemy will send people, things. And hold on. Sometimes they look good. Sometimes money situations. You guys, I'm not kidding. The enemy will send almost anything and anyone that throw you off your track, especially if you're anointed. Come on, somebody. You heard me. If you are going to follow Jesus, you must forsake anything and everything that is keeping you from conforming to his image. Peter and Andrew had to leave their nets. Matthew had to leave his money tables. Following Christ means we must leave whatever holds us back from following him. Now that we have answered the question, what is a Christian? Let's make that question personal. Are you a Christian? I told y'all, I said I was going to start saying I'm Christ-like. Because Christians, some of you, some of you need you need to be arrested. I'm going to be real with you. Okay, you just need to be arrested. Why? Because you're fraudulent. But anywho, I digress. You are, if you are faith in Christ, fellowship with Christ, and follow after Christ. Which of these things is most difficult for you? And what can you do beginning today to become a better Christian? Really answer the questions, you guys. So we finished with lesson one. However, so we'll do lesson two next week. And remember, we're going to start on Tuesdays. This is just, you know, I did this because yesterday I got caught up in driving and got in traffic. All right. So, thus said the Lord. Now we got to go to. So, as I was preparing for Bible study, God said, Deanna, you know how you got to do it. You can't just, you know, most of you say, okay, we finished. Bye, y'all. Remember the tithe and offering. Oh, this is going to get gully. Micah. God took me to, you know, I, I went through the whole Bible first. Um, that's Micah, the book of Bi Micah. And um, whoo, let's just get in it. Book of Micah, everybody. If you don't have it, just listen. 
The word of the Lord that came to Micah the Morishite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hekaziah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear ye all people, hearken, O earth, and all that is therein, and let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord God coming forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. And the mountain should be molted under him, and the valley should be cleaved as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down a steep place. Verse 5. For transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sin of the house of Israel, what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? Or what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Verse 6. Therefore I will make Samaria as a heap of field, and as plantings of a vineyard, and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley, and I will discover the foundations thereof. And all the graven images thereof should be beaten to pieces, and all the hires thereof should be burned with fire, and all the idols thereof I will lay desolate. For she gathered it of the hire of a harlot, and they should return to the hire of a harlot. Now, you heard what I just read. God said, all of this shall come to pass, as even now. We are under judgment. If you if you don't, go back and read the book of Micah for yourself. You can do audio too. It's going to hit you. This was deep because when I, I was just like, oh my God. Let me continue. Verse 8. Therefore I will wild and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a welling like the dragons and mourning as the owls. Verse 9. For her wound is incurable, for it is coming to Judah. He is coming to the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Verse 10. Declare ye it not goth, weep ye not at all in the house of Apho, roll thyself in the dust. Verse 11. Pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Sapphire, having thy shame naked, the inhabitants of Zanon, came not forth in the morning of Bethesar. He should receive you of you standing. Verse 12. For the inhabitant of Morath waited carefully for good, but evil came down from the Lord into the gate of Jerusalem. Verse 13. O thou inhabitants of Lachish, bind the chariot to the swift beast. She in the beginning of sin, beginning of the sin to the daughters of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in there. The daughters of Zion. We are the daughters of Zion. It says, for the transgressions of Israel were found in thee. We are in sin. The whole world is in sin, period. I don't care what country, what state, we are in sin. This is a time to repent. Everybody, me, you, and that famous dog named Boo. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get him one day. I'm going to put him up on here, which I'm going to say, me, Boo. Mm -hmm. Okay, chapter 2. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their babes. When the morning is light, they practice it because it, is, because it is in the power of their hand. He's talking about the leaders of this world. You heard me. Verse 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take, a, take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Self-explanatory. Verse 3. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from what you should not remove your necks, neither should you go heartily, for this time is evil. God is saying a lot of people are doing their own thing. People in power taking other people houses and you, you know even if it's a bank you got to understand now i know you say well they don't pay their bills or whatever god look at things spiritual and in the natural come on somebody let me continue verse 4 in that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say we be utterly spoiled he had changed the portion of my people how hath he removed it from me turning away he had divided our fields Verse 5, Therefore thou should have none that should cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. We're not doing things the right way in the body of Christ. I don't care what y'all say. And that's from the biggest to the least. But it's about to be, be known. It's a short book, so just hold on, hold on. Verse 6, I'm chapter 2, Micah, verse 6. Prophesy ye not. Say they to them that prophesy, that they should not prophesy to them, that they should not take thy shame. Verse 7. O thou, thou art the house of Jacob. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? <laughs> are these his doings? <laughs> do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? God says some prophets are just lying. Some pastors are just lying. People are just lying in the name of God. Let me continue. Verse 8. Even of late my people is rising up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men adverse from war. 
pull off the robe. I told y'all four, five years ago, God never told us to take off the robes. If I preach anywhere, I promise you I will have the robe on. Now, the only time I didn't wear my robe is when we did the spiritual authority. He told us to wear fatigue, so we wore fatigues. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Let me continue. All right. Verse 9. The women of my people have, have ye cast out from their pleasant houses, from their children. Have ye taken away my glory forever? You know all them systems, CPS systems, and all them systems, how they got all these kids in foster care and stuff like that? Everything was written before we even did it. Read your Bible. Let's continue. Praise God, praise God. Verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it should destroy you, even a sore destruction. The land is polluted. Notice what he said. It should destroy you. Self-explanatory. Now y'all see what's happening with this world? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. My God. Verse 11, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he should be even the prophet of this people. You heard him. Some of them prophets drinking, doing stuff. <laughs> wow. Let's continue. Verse 12, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel, and I will put them together as the sheep of Bozer, and the flock in the midst of their fold. They should make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. There's a remnant. There's a remnant. We are part of the remnant, those that will not compromise. Those We don't want the world. <laughs> Yeah, let's continue. Verse 13. The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king should pass before them and the law on the head of them. Verse 3. Chapter 3. And I said, Here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel. It is not for you to know judgment. Everybody know, want, want to know. God said, I'll let you know when I let you know. And that's me too. He talked to his prophets. I tell people all the time, I couldn't say anything unless God downloaded. But I have to be in a position. And I don't care what gift you have, how anointed you are, God is the master. He tells you how he wants it done. Let's continue. Verse 2. Who hate the good and love the evil. Hmm. Is that not what's happening? <laughs> Hello. Y'all know it's true. Who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. Verse 3. Who also eat the flesh of my people and flat their skin from off them. And they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and the flesh with the cauldron. Verse 4. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. You will cry and cry. And God said, I don't hear you because you can change your ways. You want to do what you want to do. Self is real. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put it not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. Lion prophets. Woe unto you, said the Lord. Woe unto you. Verse 6. Therefore, night should be unto you that you should not have a vision and it should be darkened to you and you should not divine and the sun should go down over the prophets and the day should be dark over them he gonna take he gonna take the little anointing they have away mm -hmm. verse seven then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners confounded yea they should cover their lips for there is no answer of god again he's talking about lying prophets and seers who call themselves prophets as well. Okay, let's continue. Verse 8. But truly I am full of power of the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Verse 9. Hear this, I pray ye, you, ye heads of the house of Jacob, and the prince of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment, and pervert all equity. <laughs> Verse 10. Y'all understand what that means? They build up Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with iniquity. Murdering people, killing people, even in authority. Y'all ain't ready for me for real. Some of y'all get offended on here, but I'm I'm doing minimum because I'm listening to what God's saying. But y'all know I like to do maximum. I'm gonna be obedient. Hello, verse eleven. The heads thereof judge for for reward. Mm. I'm gonna say that again. The heads thereof judge for reward. Everybody got a hustle going on. You heard me in the church, out the church, leaders, everybody. Mm -hmm. I told y'all this the other day. And the priests thereof teach for hire. 
Didn't I just say that last night? That's why when God brought Michael to me, I, I don't know when I said it, but I know I said it in a, um, a video this week how people want to get paid and this and that. And God says sometimes you're not supposed to. But anyway, let, let me continue. Let me continue. And the prophets thereof divine for money. I'm going to give you a prophecy. You going to give me some money? I've never done that. Never will. You're not supposed to. End of story. For will they learn, lean upon me, the Lord, and say it's not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. He said, when you least suspect it, I'm coming for you. Verse 12. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as the field. Jerusalem should become heaps and the mountain and the house as the high places of the forest. Chapter 4. But in the last days it should come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord should be established in the top of the mountains. And it should be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow into it. God said, I have a church remnant. We came in power, we're going out in power. Can't stop it. You can't stop it. You can't stop it, thus said the Lord, although they try. Even from within. Y'all don't want me for real. <laughs> what y'all think the devil is at mostly? I'm going to say it. Most people don't want to say it. The church. Sorry. Not sorry. The Bible says he transformed himself into the angel of light. He knows the Bible. He knows the scripture. <laughs> they have a form of God and is denying the true power thereof. Let's continue. Let's continue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 2. And many nations shall come up and say, Come, and let us go into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth at Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse 3. And he shall judge among his people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword in this nation, neither shall they learn war no anymore. This is when we all gone to heaven. Verse 4, but they shall sit every under, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none should make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. Verse 5, for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Verse 6, in that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. Her, United States, her, <laughs> yeah, Babylon. Let's continue. Verse 7. And I will make her a halted remnant, and her that was cast off before a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Verse 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, until thee should it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Verse 9. Now why do thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is there counsel of Paris? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. We are putting leaders in position that are not anointed. And I wonder why this whole world cried. Verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Israel, Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shall thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, that thou shalt go even to Babylon. There should be delivered, there the Lord shall. I'm almost finished, y'all. It's a sharp book. Redeem them from the hand of thy enemies. Let me read that one again because a lot of you need to be encouraged. Y'all thinking, you know, people are so mighty and powerful. Remember your God. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travel. For thou, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There should thou be delivered. There the Lord. I have a new Bible, basically. <laughs> Shall redeem them from the hand of thy enemies. Verse 11. Now also many nations are gathered against thee. Let's, let's say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. Verse 12. But no, but they know not the thoughts of the Lord. Neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves unto the floor. All of your enemies shall fall before you. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. I don't care how mighty. I don't care how much money. I don't care how much power. 
Come on, somebody, because that's what's going on in this old world. The world has came and put fear, which I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's why people walk in fear, but I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare faith unto you in Jesus Christ's name. Verse 13, arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thee horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Do you know what that means? God said, I'm going to make you so strong. Your anointing going to be so strong. Your power going to be so strong. You're going to be like the apostles. Let me tell you something. People think it's over with. Honey, the apostles was a prelude of what's coming. I feel the power of God, the revelation of God, the revival of God. You see what this take place? And it shall soon. But first, there must be a great repentance. And then once we get pure and clean, watch the power of God come on this earth. Dead people going to rise. Limbs, blind people going to see. I'm telling you what's coming, thus saith the Lord. Nobody can stop it. Not even them. Chapter 5. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Verse 2. But thou Bethlehem, Ephala, and he's talking about war. All these things that y'all see, this is the prophets, the old prophets knew it. All you have to do is read every prophetic book and you're going to realize where we at. We're in the book of Jeremiah, Micah, and Isaiah. Next week we're going to do Isaiah. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's continue. Get out of those, should he come forth, unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings from have been from of old and from everlasting. I don't care what nobody say. This new, new church, you can't have a new church without the old. The Old Testament is still real because you can't have the Old Testament without the New Testament and the New Testament without the Old Testament. I don't know where these new, new preachers talking about the old don't exist. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm going to say it again. Yes, it does. Don't play with God. I'm going to tell y'all, don't play with God. Verse 4. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and the majesty, majesty of his name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide for now, should be great unto the ends of the earth. Verse 5. And this man should be in peace with the Assyrian, shall come into our land, and when he should tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. This is what's gonna this is what's folding now. You see all these rumors of war? These are leaders. But in those leaders, there are some key men of God. You don't know them now, but they're gonna arise, said the Lord. Verse 6, And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod in the entrances thereof. Thus shall be delivered from the Asrian, Assyrian when he cometh into our land, and when he treaded within our borders. There, there will be war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verse 7, And the remnant of Jacob should be in the midst of many people, as the dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarried not for a man, nor waited for the source of men. Verse 8, And the remnant of Jacob should be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and none can be delivered. Aren't you the Judah, Judah the lion? Don't Christ represent the Lion of Judah? That's what we're supposed to do in this hour. You see, things are going to happen just like they're happening. And it was foretold. But you have to know who you are. And you have to believe the Word of God. But you can't believe the Word of God if you don't know the Word of God. You got to get back in your Bibles, people. Most of you don't read your Bibles. I'm telling you what God said. So I know it's true. Verse 9. Thy hand should be lifted up upon thy adversaries. And all thy enemies should be cut off. Y'all up there crying about people doing you wrong. Do Let them do what they do. God fights for you. I'm going to say it again. This verse, God fights for you. God said, I'm going to fight for you. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Let's continue. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass in what day... In that day, said the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses of the midst of them, and I will destroy their chariots. Y'all know what horses and chariots mean war. Yeah. Verse 11. And I will cut off the cities of the land, and throw down all the strongholds. Verse 12. And I will cut off all of witchcraft. Hello! Because y'all new, new preachers talking about, hey, I don't know about witchcraft. It's right here in the Bible. Don't stop me. Hallelujah. Let me read it again. Verse 12. And I will cut off all of witchcraft. Out of thy hand, and thou should have no more sues, say yes. There it is. Hallelujah. 13. Thy graven images also would I cut off, and the standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou should no more worship the work of thy hands. They ain't going to like it, Lord, but you, I know I got to be the be. Okay. Thy graven images, and I will cut off all thy standing images. What is standing images? 
Lord, they're gonna be like she jealous or whatever. Emmys, Grammys, you you know those, you know those. You, 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 you. Woo! Y'all better listen to God. Verse 14. And I will pluck up the groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. 15. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fear upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Do you understand what he's saying? Such they have not heard. Chapter 6. Hear ye now what the Lord said. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Verse 2. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. You heard controversy. We're not doing right. So we have a... we. How can you fight against God? Hello. Hallelujah. Verse 3. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. He say, stand up. He, he's doing a job on us. Talk. Where were you when I created the world? What have I done but love you? And in all, I still have my hands stretched out. Let's continue. Praise God. Praise God. For I have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Verse 5. O oh, my people, remember now what Bela, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Bor, answered him from Shittim into Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Now, if you don't know Bela, the king of Moab, they sacrificed children. They sacrificed people. They killed people. Yeah, y'all get the drift. Y'all understand exactly what I'm saying. Let's continue. Verse 6. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what do the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. I'm going to read that one again. He has showed the old man what is good and what do the Lord require of us but to do justly, do the right thing, and to love mercy. Be kind, extend grace and mercy to people. Don't be all mean and ugly. And to walk humbly with thy God. He does not like arrogant and pride. Sorry, not sorry. Let's continue. Verse 9. The Lord's voice cried into the city, and the man of wisdom showed. See thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Verse 10. Are there yet not treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and the scant measure that is abominable? You know they're not treating people fair, even in labor and wages. Verse 11. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances? So you know that means nothing's fair. Wicked balances? Hmm. Even the scales of justice. Don't they have a, a, a balance for their image? Y'all better understand what the Lord is saying in this hour. Let's continue. And with the bag of deceitful weights. <laughs> Verse 12, for the rich men thereof are full of violence, mm. and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Verse 13, therefore also I will make thee sick in smiting thee, in making thee desolate of because of thy sins. Verse 14, thou should eat, but not be satisfied, and thy casting down should be in the midst of thee, and thou should hold, take hold, but now but should not deliver and what thou deliverest will i give up with the sword verse 15 thou shalt sow but thou shalt not reap thou shalt tread the olives but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil now y'all know why i talk about the anointing all so much because even when they destroy the world god have given the angels charge do not touch the wine and the oil that's how powerful it is and sweet wine but not should but should not drink it for the statues of Omer are kept in the works of the house of Ahab, and you walk in their councils that should that I should make a desolation and the inhabitants thereof and hissing. Therefore you should bear the reproach of my people that are all those that are doing people wrong. God gonna get you in the story. Verse seven, chapter seven. That's the last chapter, y'all. Woe is me, for I am when they have gathered the summer fruits as the grape gleaners of the vintage. There is no cluster to you. My soul desired the first fruit first ripe fruit. Verse 2. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. 
Wow, that's self-explanatory. Verse 3. They that may do evil with both hands earnestly, the prince of acid and the judge asked for a reward. And the great man, he uttered his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. Didn't I tell you? Everybody hustling. Every part of the world. Sorry. Every form, government, this, this y'all know what I'm saying. Is 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 written. Verse four. The best of them as a briar, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of the watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall they be their now shall be their perplexity. I'm sorry, y'all. Perplexity. Okay, there it is. Verse five. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a God. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lied in thy bosom. Test the spirit by the spirit. Some of you just trust people, and then when you get hurt, used, or abused, you be like, what good? Did you test the spirit by the spirit? I told y'all, and I, this is what I taught my class. And when you meet someone, Father God showed me their spirit. Because people lie like a rug, and, and they pretend. They got good actresses and actresses. I mean, make you believe it, they could win an Emmy. Ask God to show you their spirit. And then after that, act accordingly. Be strong enough to do what you got to do. All right, let's continue. Verse 6. But the son disarmed the father. <laughs> the daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Verse 7. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord should be a light unto me. Verse 9, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light and I should behold his righteousness. Verse 10, then she, that is my enemy, shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said unto me. What is, where is the law of thy God? My eyes should behold her. Now should she be trotting down as the mire in the streets. Verse 11. In the day that the walls are to be built, in that day should the decree be far removed. Verse 12. In that day also shall come even until thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress, even to the river, and from the sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. 13. Notwithstanding the land should be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. Your, everything you do, either is rotten or good fruit. <laughs> Let's continue. For 14. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thy heritage, which dwells solitary in the wood in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Basha and Gilad as in the days of old. Tell people the truth. Feed them the word of God. Praise God. 15. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Verse 16. The nations shall see and be confounded at their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears should be deaf. Verse 17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms in the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. God is going to equip. As a matter of fact, he's doing it right now. The people of God, you remember when Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost, but really they lied to Paul? That's what kind of power the people of God is getting ready to be endued with. Y'all better stop playing with people of God, I'm telling you. Right now it's like a mockery, right? And y'all just, do, you know how people, you know how they doing? Watch what's getting ready to happen, thus said the Lord. Let's continue. 18. Who is God like unto thee, that park in iniquity, and pass it by the transgression, transgression of the remnant of his heritage he retained it not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy verse 19 he will turn again he will have compassion upon us he will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea verse 20 thou will perform the truth to jacob and the mercy to abraham which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old and this was the word of god Woo! micah ain't no joke none of the prophets were no joke if you ask me but ain't nobody asking me, huh? <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, it has been real. God bless you. God bless you. I said an hour, but, you know, got to go where the Holy Spirit wants us to go. So, and let me pray y'all out. Any questions, email me. Or I'm going to put my email, put all my information if you want to email me. Any questions or things of that nature. Again, this is the book for those that want to purchase it. I think you should. This would be something that will help you in your journey. That's what the serious ones. Journey Through Spiritual Boot Camp, Basic Training, Tommy C. Higgle, right? Thank you. I got it right. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and pray out. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. All righty.
Father God, we just thank you for this Bible study, and we thank you for each other. Father God, as we part ways, Father God, encourage us, strengthen us, Father God, and prepare us for an assignment, Father God, our mandate in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that you protect my sisters and brothers, that you guide us. Father God, that you in, you strengthen their hearts. I, 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 feel, I feel like a lot of people have something, something going on. Everybody got a story. Strengthen their hearts, their minds, their souls, their bodies, God, their spirit. God said, in order to strengthen your spirit, you must walk in the spirit. You must talk in the spirit. You must move in the spirit. You must learn the spirit that said the Lord. Oh, Father God, teach us, Father God. And again, always repent, God says, because you do stuff in word, deed, sometimes just in thoughts. So God, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you. You know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless.